So another important side to talk about um, in uh, the conceptualization of the social organization of Ubayd Mesopotamia in uh, Iraq is the side of Tel Abada. Um, and what we can kind of see here is a small agricultural village, um, maybe about 100 to 150 inhabitants um, that are living in um, kind of a centralized location. Uh, level two is the excavations here using horizontal techniques. They were able to excavate most of a modern village. Um, and there are 10 structures at the site. And eight of those structures um, are built on a tripartite plan and contain uh, artifacts of domestic nature, including uh, things for grain processing, weaving, cooking, and other activities. So we can kind of see this as being the typical agricultural community. It's in the Hamrin uh, region of central Iraq, and so it would have required some level of control for irrigated agriculture. And we even see the embedding here of clay pipes, a drainage system that presumably would have been used to bring water into um, this, the community and then f keep wastewater flowing out. Um, but the telling thing is, as we kind of look at this tripartite plan among all these houses, we see one house at the site um, that is building A here. Um, and it's seven times larger uh, than the smallest household at the site. Um, and if we look at the artifacts that are found inside of it, beneath the floor of House A, 57 infant pot burials were recovered. Uh, now, we've already talked about this as the largest complex at sites like Teles Sawan, um, where th the infant burials under the, the large house there. And we see the same type of thing here. And archaeologists have generally taken this to interpret uh, Building A as the location of the chief. Um, within uh, this community or a lineage head of some sort. Now, in addition to the burials inside of Building A, there was also a large cache of tokens or small stones um, that are assumed to be counting devices that were found inside of ceramic jars. Um, and you kind of think about this, and we talked about with stamp seals as a way to kind of keep track of the goods and resources within the community. These tokens may have functioned on the same way. Um, now, Interestingly enough, we also see um, a large building called Building I um, out over here that it has four parallel rows of rooms. And basically the only thing inside of this were large basins lined in bitumen or naturally occurring oil and pitch um, that would have made them watertight and dung and chaff debris, which kind of suggests that this function is almost like a stable. Um, an animal pen, a watering uh, region to bring the domestic animals into the community. Um, so we can kind of start to look at sites like Telabada and Eridu as showing us that we're seeing the, the codification of these types of leadership positions. Um, the question then becomes what exactly um, is the role of that leadership? And so if we kind of look at the correlates of complexity here for the Ubaid in southern Mesopotamia, there are several lines of evidence that kind of point to some level of social hierarchy. Um, the temple structures, in particular Eridu, um, suggest the ability to motivate or compel laborers to build large public buildings. Um, so it would have taken an extensive amount of labor to build uh, these Mesopotamia, uh, these tripartite styled uh, large temple complexes on platforms. So there's something going on in being able to mobilize the community to do this. Um, we also see settlement pattern analysis in the region suggest a two-tiered settlement hierarchy. Um, that is, there are large centers like Ur and Eridu, which appear to be about um, 10 hectares in size, maybe 2,000 to 3,000 inhabitants. But they're also surrounded by numerous smaller settlements, all of which are about one to two hectares, much like the size of Tel Abada, um, where we can kind of think about these being 150 or so inhabitants. Um, and this kind of suggests that Eridu and Ur uh, functioned as regional centers that they were able to kind of command um, or at least draw in people from the outlying areas. And, and so if we kind of look at this, we can at tell Abada, we can see the size and function of House A suggests that it's set aside from the settlement in some way. And because of that, we kind of look at this as the village leader or chief. So we can kind of start to see this kind of tantalizing evidence for at least the emergence of some kind of hierarchical system. However, um, the burial patterns and the domestic evidence in, uh, across the households show very little signs of social differentiation um, in the Abayid period. 
So house sizes themselves could reflect functional differences in the size of families rather than social rank. So there's not any kind of anything definitive that points to the emergence of these large scale um, codified stratified leadership positions. The other thing is that temple uh, finds also oftentimes resemble those that we'd find in domestic settings and include uh, food processing and textile production. And this is where Stein's argument um, that you read for today um, really kind of comes in. He argues that this is based on the presence of staple finance, that chiefs in Ubayid society um, didn't necessarily display power through prestige goods. Right, but rather they display, they were able to control power through controlling surplus cereal crops uh, that were then pooled and distributed through the temple structures. So Eridu itself kind of functioned, the temple there functioned as this redistributive system, and the social inequality here was masked by a broader scale ideology of egalitarianism um, that's reflected in the burials, where everyone in Ubayid society, men and women, receive similar treatment in death. Um, so what we're kind of looking at here, according to Stein, is the emergence of these systems that haven't yet codified or haven't yet consolidated into a large scale exploitative extractive system similar to the states that we see um, in the proto-dynastic period of Egypt. So we're still kind of building up towards that and it wouldn't be until the the emergence of a rook, the Uruk state in southern Mesopotamia where we get that exploitative extractive system.